Hey, hey, Cub fans. Welcome back to Cubs 24-7, where Randy talks Cubs. Thanks for joining us. I don't even know where to start. Uh, there's so much uh, that happened late in this 3-2 to two win over the Mariners today. Um, first thing is, we ended up taking two out of three uh, in the series. And there, obviously, that's that was the, the minimal um, expectation going in, and we got it. And when, before we get into the details of today's game, broad picture, this, this three-game set, uh, we look back and what happened in game one with Wicks. Uh, if Jordan Wicks throws strikes, uh, we sweep that series, and we didn't hit the ball at all. Uh, we we had o Ian Happ go 0 for, 0 for 11 in the series. I think Morell was 0 for the series. Bellinger had one hit. Um, we just had just enough hitting to get it done. And if Wicks had pitched a little bit better in that opener, uh, we could have swept this series on the road in Seattle. And we're not even playing well yet offensively for sure. But um, uh, there's a lot. Stick with, the, stick with me because the 7th, 8th, and 9th was a roller coaster ride. So let's walk, go ahead and walk through it. Uh, Ian Happ started in the left field and leading off Saya DH today, hitting second. Belly was in center field, hitting third. Morell back at third in the uh, cleanup spot. Dansby at shortstop, hitting fifth. Michael Bush, first base, hitting sixth. sixth. Nico, second base, hitting seventh. Mike Talkman again in right field, hitting eighth. And Jan Gomes got the, the call behind the plate today. So it's that same lineup that we've had the whole series with uh, Gomes and, uh, and Amaya switching in that nine hole. But the the one through eight has been the same all series long. Um, we scored three. We got one in the first and two in the fourth. And that was it. We ended up with eight hits total. And we didn't walk at all. And we struck out 12 times. So that's 12 strikeouts, no walks. Um, left three on base, just two for three with runners in scoring position. Not a lot of traffic. So the scoring happened like this. In the first inning, Saya uh, doubles to left. That's one of his two hits on the day. And then Belly got uh, – the. it's an infield hit. It was just a slow roller, swinging bunt up the first base line. And with Saya on, on second base – the, the pitcher, Castillo, tried to make a play, uh, picked it up, threw it, and threw it wide of the first baseman. So they gave Bellinger a single on it, but it was just a slow roller. Maybe it went 70 feet max. And with the error, then Saya comes in and scores on the throwing error by the pitcher. So the first run is a, um, a unearned run. We got two in the fourth inning. Dansby uh, line drive double to left on the left field line. And then Bush comes up. And for the fourth game in a row, Bush uh, hits a home run. He hits a home run to right field, two RBI job. Hit another change up, and it was with two strikes again. Bush is hitting home runs with two strikes the last four. And for four games in a row, he's homered. And this was uh, no fluke, 437 feet to right field. He unloaded on it. A high fly, too. It was a big bomb. Michael Bush, big time pop. And while I'm thinking about it, I, I'm just going to say it. I, I debated ever since he hit that home run whether or not I'm going to say this to you guys. But I can't help what pops into my mind. It, it popped in, and I made a mental note that, well, I'm going to tell you it popped into my mind. But he did that, and I, I thought Joey Votto, left-handed hitting, right-handed first baseman, kind of plate discipline that, that Bush has demonstrated. And obviously, Joey Votto did it over a long career you know, he's Joey Votto. But as a as a Cub, we've watched Joey Votto do that to us for a decade plus. And that's what it reminded me of. Sort of the same approach, same type player. So uh, right now, Michael Bush is by far our best hitter. He's hot. He's carrying us. And he basically won the game with that two-run home run in the fourth. We didn't score the rest of the way. So let's go through how everybody did. Ian uh, went 0 for 4. And... Um, Couple of strikeouts, uh, fly out to center, hit, hit that one pretty well, and a five-three ground out. Say went two for four. Say had the double in the first, ended up scoring. Had a nice solid uh, single in the fifth. It wasn't barreled up, a little bit off the fist, but it, it had eyes and made it through. So say it went two for four, had a run scored. 
Belly went one for four, but I'm telling you, he was 0 for four. He didn't hit the ball hard at all. He had that that slow roller in the first. He struck out in the third uh, and flew out to left field, just flares both times. Um, I think one hit in the series, and he's hitting well under 200. And they talk about him saying he's, he feels good and he thinks it's coming. I think he looks awful. I think, I think Bellinger looks lost. He didn't hit the ball hard at all today. And you know how you when you watch a guy hit, if your optimism level is up or down, right? Like when Bush comes to the plate, you're like, okay, something's going to happen. And it, it just it goes with it when the players are hot. It's not it's not anything other than how we feel. It's just it's what comes natural. Belly comes to the plate, and I start marking down and out. Uh, you know, you just kind of go, oh, he's, here comes Belly. He's just not going to do anything. That's that's sad. And so Bellinger, one for four. Christopher Morrell has cooled way down. Uh, he's hitless in the series as well. He went 0 for four with um, – his average is down to 237. So all of a sudden Christopher Morrell uh, isn't hitting. Dansby Sponson went uh, one for four today. He had that uh, that double in the fourth, ended up scoring on Michael Bush's home run. Dansby's hitting 245. That's that's about where he is usually, it looks like. Uh, Michael Bush's average is up to 327. He had the home run, so he had a uh, run scored two RBIs today. Uh, he had a, a, a single in the second inning, so he went one for four today and didn't make an error. He caught everything today. Uh, Nico went one for three. Nico had a uh, a line drive uh, single in the seventh, hit the ball hard, uh, barreled it up, and then, so his average is up to 182. But uh, Nico gets picked off. Uh, so we had in the uh, uh, top of that seventh inning, Nico gets on, got a little bit of a rally. It's three to two at that uh, at that point, and uh, – he ends up getting picked off, then Talk follows him with a strikeout to squelch that. Talk goes 0 for 3, and um, he's hitting under 200 at 192, which, note to self, uh, before we're done, I want to talk about who we're going to see at DH uh, in my mind. So we'll, we'll, we'll cover that. Remind me if I don't get to it, but I will. And Gomes went 1 for 3, had that single in the first inning, and uh, so Gomes is hitting 192. So offensively we're kind of in a funk uh you know uh, funkadelic uh hap say is not real hot he's pretty decent but hap and belly morell are are uh, scuffling nico and talk and gomes i mean dan's be giving us a little bit bush carried us and um it, i don't know if, i guess that's good news we're nine and six with the win today and our guys aren't hitting um, so there's, I guess we could look at it that way. There's more to come. Let's go to the pitching. Such a, uh, a very interesting day on the mound. First of all, Javier Assad was really good today. Uh, I'll give you his total line. He went five and two thirds, gave up four hits total, walked one, uh, struck out six and just gave up a two run home run on his last pitch of the day. He just went really good. He goes, um, but retired the first eight in order. So first inning, uh, two strikeouts, second inning, two. Uh, third inning, uh, he gives up a base hit. Uh, he's sort of cruising, 44 pitches, but very efficient. Uh, gives up a hit in the fourth, but it was just a slow roller hit. Wasn't hit hard. Uh, got a strikeout, and then they got him out of the inning with a double play. In the fifth, they gave up a hit uh, and a stolen base. Gets out of it. Uh, then in the sixth inning, gives up a hit, strikes out a guy, and then gives gives up a, a home run to Polanco. And it was really his first miss of the a game. It was a it looked like a breaking ball, slider, curve, not sure. Uh, but it hung. It was middle, middle, hanger, little cement mixer right in the middle, and Polanco didn't miss it, just torqued it. So uh, they go ahead and pull him at that point. But uh, that one pitch, you take that one pitch away, Javier cruised. And, guys, he was – we talked a little bit about how Wicks throws a lot of pitches and he lost command on some of them, and I had the idea that maybe he cut back on some of his pitch selections, so we just sort of, you know, uh, focuses in on maybe uh, fastball uh, change and, and curve. Um, Assad was the opposite today. He commanded all of it. Uh, he had he was throwing cutter, he's throwing sinker, he's throwing slider, a uh, four seam, two seam, and a curve. I mean, he was really good. I just wish he hadn't hung that uh, that uh, curve 
to uh, Polanco. It would have uh, if he'd have gotten out of the six. That that was more what he looked like. So they pull him with um, uh, two outs in the sixth, and um, Yancey comes in and gets a strikeout, gets out of the inning. So there's where we are. It's uh, we're up two to nothing. Yancey just comes in, gets us out of the sixth. So we got seventh, eighth, and ninth. Uh, so Yancey starts in the seventh inning, hits the first guy, walks the second guy, first and second. They pull Yancey. Here comes Mark Leiter Jr. to the rescue. And I, I talked about Mark yesterday. Uh, Mark, I'll just tell you what he did and then tell you how. He gets out of it in two pitches. Mark Leiter Jr. comes in the seventh with two on, nobody out, first and second. First batter, he gets to fly out to center, lazy fly. Um Guy in second base tags goes to third. So he's got first and third, one out, up one in the seventh inning, and he induces a six uh, or four six three double play. And he did it on back-to-back pitches. So Mark Leiter Jr. came in and put the fire out in the seventh, and it was a fire in the seventh, and Mark put it out in two pitches. In the eighth inning, still we're up three to two. Hector comes in. Check this out. Hector goes walk. Walk, strikeout, walk. Tommy Harvey goes to talk to him after the second walk. That helped. He struck out the next guy and then walked the fourth guy. So, um, and they're they're getting the bullpen up, but they're not they're not pulling him. He's he, they leave him. You know, it was um, it was his. We used this group of four of uh, Yancey, Leiter, Hector, and Adbert. We used the same four yesterday. So they just, I think they just decided just Hector's got to do it. So with uh, the bases loaded, one out, uh, three walks, walk the bases loaded, he induces a 6-3 double play to get out of the eighth. Just electric. It was a kind of a quirky ground ball hit uh, to the left of second base, uh, brought Dansby toward the bag. Dansby did a really good job. He was patient because this ball was not a – not hit with pace and and it, he was going to get an in-between hop and he did he got this in-between hop that looked like it could have gone squirrely and Dansby just surrounded it took his time uh let his momentum uh take him to the bag after he caught it and turned that double play it, it was huge uh because it I was like it's you know we're gonna blow this Hector just could not find the strike zone so we get out of the eighth Adbert comes in in the ninth goes strikeout strikeout and he's two strikes away from uh, finishing out with three strikes in a row and gives up a ground ball hit in between Nico and Bush into right field. So guy's on first base. And uh, Adbert does a pickoff play, goes and picks him off. His, his snap throw quick. Bush puts the tag on him, calls him safe, calls him back, but he looked out. So it was um, a challenge, and the challenge came back to overturned it. So I guess we had a walk-off uh, challenge overturn is what it was. Awesome. I couldn't tell if they were going to call it. A lot of, there was some shade in the replay, and I couldn't really tell. But, uh, yeah, they picked him off. So Adbert came in, strikeout, strikeout, gave up that little ground ball, and then picked a guy off with a lightning fast pickoff move. It was awesome. So that's the final, 3-2. to two. Cubs are now 9-6. and six. And I, I want to share a couple things with you. Nico got picked off in the seventh inning. He was trying to get a jump. Uh, the pitcher caught him and stepped off and got him in a rundown. Seiya Suzuki got caught stealing in the fifth. And, you know, what was interesting about it is I had made a note that I was going to tell you guys. Do you know how many stolen bases we had this year going into today? We have two. We, nobody has less. The, the We're ranked 30th in the league in stolen bases, and the, the 29th team has twice as many as we do. That's how, how we don't win. We don't run. We don't steal. And I was just curious. Is that I mean, I, we haven't really talked about it, but the fact that we can't steal, got caught stealing a day, Nico got picked off trying to do it. We've only stolen two. We don't have a base stealer on the squad anywhere. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if I should be worried about that or not. I don't know. Here's the next thing. Um, I, I, I mentioned I, I, DH. Why isn't Garrett Cooper getting more time? Have you checked Garrett Cooper's numbers? First of all, he only has 13 at-bats. 
they're not giving him any look. He's hitting 385 with a 467 on base, 846 slug, OPS 1.313. He's got a homer, uh, struck out six times, walked twice. You know, I mean, Talkman, he's sitting 192. Why wouldn't we give Garrett a little more look, especially since we got Hap and Belly and Morrell, Nico Talk and Gomes scuffling? I don't know. I, I just, I kind of feel like at some point somebody's going to look at that stat line with what Garrett Cooper's doing and, and say to themselves, maybe we should give him a, a run. I Maybe we should. So I'll be interested to see. I'm, I fully expect, and I haven't heard any discussion. I'm just sitting here going, who's on the bench? Madrigal came in for Morrell in the ninth inning for defensive again, but they've sort of stuck with this lineup. Meanwhile, you got Garrett Cooper. Uh, I I don't know. It, it, it intrigues me to to know what their discussion is around Garrett Cooper. And what if you're Garrett Cooper sitting there with a 1.313 OPS and they, they, they don't play you all weekend? So I don't know. That's what it is. We'll see. Headed off to Arizona. We've got a big three-game set with Arizona. We know they're good, and um, we're going to have to pick it up a little bit. I checked the the rotation. looks like we got Brown going on Monday, and Kyle Hendricks is listed uh, for the start on Tuesday. And I'm assuming Jordan Wicks on Wednesday, but I haven't I haven't seen it. But Brown and Kyle Monday and Tuesday are listed, so we're going to get another look at Kyle Hendricks and see what happens. Another look at Brown, see if he can back that up. So we still got a lot of question marks, you know. The question marks that we have are pretty obvious, and we're trying to get answers to them. Same time, we're nine and six, and we just won a, a road series uh, in Seattle, so. I, all that is good, right? And fortunately, Michael Bush is hot, and um, Assad did what he did today. We had Shota help us out, so we had three or four guys this weekend that took care of it for us while we're waiting on uh, waiting on the rest of the guys to come around, and they will. All right, guys, thanks for joining me here. I really appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you and talk to you soon. Arizona's next. Go Cubs, go.